This is Intern Views, the series where I talk to folks I've never met about Up With People, Marilyn Monroe, and the opera. Today's guest is Julie Lumsden. I'm so, the season finale. You are the season finale, and- There'll be some drama in this episode then. <laughs> we need to make sure that Nick gets in here somehow. I want to, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna edit him in. That's why we're recording now. Uh, I should have also, known. Also, I'm using a fancy glass, so- Whoa, that needs to like rosé champagne in there. Wow. You don't know what's in here. You don't get to know. What time is it? Who cares? It's season finale time! Woohoo! Hear, hear. Okay, let's cheers. All three guys. Cheers to the season finale. Yay! <laughs> you are, I think, the person who I've spent the most time with online at the Shaw Festival because you were supposed to be playing Louise and Gypsy, so like who is in every single scene, uh, and you were also supposed to be in Flesh. And because I was working on both of those shows, like we've spent an enormous amount of online time together and we both tend to attend ensemble class all the time as well. <laughs> yeah, I would read your article that you had written for CBC and you had oh. said, it's crazy that I'd never met any of these people. And it took me a moment because I was like, wait, have I never met Rob? And we had, we've never met in person and yet you've seen me cry over Zoom during rehearsals. <laughs> Dozens of times now. <laughs> I know, it feels like we're kind of like internet friends, like pen pals, and it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment when we can, you know, give each other a hug. So where are you right now? So right now I am in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is my hometown, and it's basically where I'm based out of if I'm not doing work elsewhere. So Amazing. it's like two weeks of the year. Are you trained in opera first? Is that how that happened? Yeah, I am... Um, I was ending high school and I didn't really know that you could like go to school for theater. I, I was, you know, I really liked theater and I did musical theater in, in school and I was taking voice lessons kind of as a hobby and then grade 11 came and I was pretty good at school and so I was like, well, like, you know, maybe I'll go and do law or, or be a teacher and, and then my music teacher was like, you should look into music and I was like, Okay. And she's like, you'd have to do your grade two theory, your grade eight voice exam, get it all ready in about eight months and then go and do an audition. Right. And I was like, oh God, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> and then I did it. So did you come from uh, a non-theater, non-music family? Or did you, like, what was, what is sort of your parents' uh, role in this? My parents are both healthcare workers. Okay. Um, but they both have a love for music. They both love the arts. And I remember my mom saying to us as children, you know, we don't have the funds to, you know, put all three of you kids in anything you want to do or, you know, the nicest clothes or the nicest car or whatever. But if you want to do something, you let us know, we'll find a way, we'll make it happen. I, I definitely know that I'm here because my parents both um, prioritize the arts in their life in, in you know, more of, of a hobby way, but I wouldn't be able to do this if, you know, my mom was in Up With People as a, as a young woman. And what? It was a Up With People? Yeah. They totally came to my school. I have <laughs> yeah. Up With People songbook. Obsessed. <laughs> I have the tape. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she like met the Pope. She traveled around the world and, and you know, she loved singing. We would sing in church all the time and my dad played guitar. So like music was always here. I just don't think that it was within their realm of realizing that it could be, you know, a job and, and Even provide. though your mom wasn't up with people. I know. My whole world has changed right now. It's, <laughs> this is huge. Now can I just interview your mom? That's what I want. <laughs> Uh, okay, I might, I have no, like, my questions are gone. It's all gone. <laughs> I'm just thinking about up with people now. <laughs> One of the things that, that I also was piecing together is, like, you had, in the first Shaw Biz, you sang this beautiful piece of music that is also, like, an Indigenous opera piece. Is that accurate? Am I remembering correctly? Yeah, that is totally correct. 
I sang this piece that was called um, The Healing Aria that is from a new opera about Louis Riel um, that I believe at one point was called Heart of the North. Um, and that is written by Neil Weissenau and Suzanne Steele, who are both Métis um, collaborat collaborators. I wonder if my computer is making more noise. Do you? Do I have a weird noise too or no? Not that I can hear of, but I think my fan is done. Yeah, your fan's definitely okay. done. Okay. <laughs> Nick is going to enjoy all of this, I'm sure. <laughs> so, but you're talking about your heritage, so do you identify as Indigenous? Yeah, so I am uh, a Métis woman. I am Métis, um, Scottish, and German. Uh, my dad's side is Métis, and I'm a member of the Manitoba Métis Federation. Um, oh. And that is something that has been a really, really important part of my artistic journey and, and, and my journey as a storyteller and my journey in life, pretty much. I talk to, to, to a lot of artists um, from the BIPOC community, and sometimes it feels like you enter a space and your ancestry enters before you. Mm. And so I don't really get to be Julie. I get to be, oh, you know, she's a member of the Manitoba Métis Federation and she's an actor. And so being in those spaces where you get to be your full self, I get to just feel like, oh, I'm just Julie who's yeah. saying these things. And, and it's, it's a really, really exciting experience to be able to be seen as a, as a whole. I don't know how I'm gonna ever edit this. Tell me about some of the things that you love to do outside of uh, theater. What do I love to do outside of theater? Okay, 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 I have an answer, okay. What do I love to do outside of theater? So, this is so, okay. Outside of theater, there's not a lot that I love to do because I really love theater. Same. Yeah. I think we're just going to have to split this into two episodes. This was <laughs> like a double season finale where you just get like a full Julia Lumsden start to finish. Do you have a memory of a first show that either you were in or you saw that was the thing that really hooked you? In elementary school, I was part of a four five split class. So it was grade fours and grade fives and I was in grade four. And our elementary school was doing a, I think we were having a centennial anniversary and we were going to put on a through the decades um, concert and so our class was supposed to put together a musical offering for the 50s so our music teacher kind of put together a little skit and the skit was going to be um, John F. Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe and Marilyn Monroe was going to sing happy birthday to the school and so our <laughs> music so wildly <laughs> inappropriate anyway please continue <laughs> Anyways, I auditioned for Marilyn Monroe, and the way that we worked was a very democratic system. <laughs> it was that the class was going to decide who was going to be their Marilyn. So I was in grade four, and there was this really popular girl in grade five, and we both were auditioning, and some other people were auditioning, and we made it down to the final two. It was me and this popular girl. Um, her name was Carly, I think. And so it was us two, and everyone voted for Carly. No one voted for me. So I remember leaving at the end of class and just being like, well, that sucks, but maybe next year. And my music teacher pulled me aside and goes, Julie, come see me at recess. So I was like, okay. I didn't think I was that bad. Like, what? And so I come back at recess and she goes, I created a new part for you. If you were on Ellen right now, I would make you sing it. And <laughs> I would have already got your former teacher on the phone and we'd like call her in. <laughs> like, explain yourself. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on stage? <gasps> craziest thing that ever happened to me on stage was opening night of Les Mis at Rainbow Stage, which is a 2300 seat theater, so there's a lot of people there. It was during On My Own, I'm the only person on stage. I'm singing, I'm living my full dream, and I have never known Cesura. There's silence. I hear my best friend who's playing Cosette go, is my mic on? off stage and the whole audience laughs and I have to finish the song. I'm like, why is her mic on stage? I'm the only person on stage right now. Thank you for being the season finale um, <laughs> all the way from Winnipeg. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, this has been great. And I can't wait till we get to meet each other in real life. I know, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so great, Rob. Oh. <laughs>
It'll be fantastic. Mm-hmm.